Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. On this channel we post writing tips, unboxings, book course book reviews and the occasional vlog. And today I have another book review for you and it is Deep Light by Frances Hardinge. First of all, can we just appreciate how gorgeous this cover is? This is the independent bookshop version and it is signed with this cool stamp in it. Behind the sleeve is this shiny blue metallic on blue, which is really interesting. And on the inside, in the front, we have a map of the Myriad, which you know I'm a sucker for maps. And in the back, we have lots of images of the gods that are in this book. So that's really cool because you can reference them at any point whilst reading. Now, I actually got this book years ago from Mr. B's Emporium in Bath and I don't know why it's taken me so long to read it because honestly, I really enjoyed it. Let me read you guys the blurb first. Before we get into that, don't forget if you like what you see to subscribe to this channel. Your continued support means a lot, so thank you guys so much. All right, blurb time. The underwater gods of the myriad were as real as the coastlines and currents and as merciless as the winds and whirlpools. Then one day they rose up and tore each other apart, killing many hundreds of islanders and changing the myriad forever. On the jumbled streets of the island of Ladies Crave live Hark and his best friend Jelt. They are scavengers living off their wits, diving for relics of the gods, desperate for anything they can sell. But now there is something restless stirring beneath the waves, calling to someone brave enough to retrieve it. Something valuable, something dangerous. Nothing is quite as it seems, and when the waves try to claim Jelt, Hark will do anything to save him and the islands that he loves. Even if it means a death-defying journey into the strange dark light of the undersea, face not only who his friend has become, but what. This has loads of good reviews on the back. We have... An electrifying story about a friendship as dark and dangerous as the ocean and a journey as treacherous as the gods themselves. Patrick Ness says everyone should read Francis Hardinge, everyone right now. Sarah Perry, author of The Essex Serpent, says one of our finest storytellers. M.R. Carey, author of The Girl with All the Gifts, Hardinge creates an entire world and furnishes it with wonders, pure magic. Sunday Times says a new novel by Hardinge is always an event. And the Guardian, not many authors can conjure such an utterly brilliant modern fairy tale. So, Raven reviews on this one. If you hadn't guessed, it is about the ocean. We have submarines. It's actually quite refreshing. It gives almost like a steampunk feel, but mixed in with just island life. And it's very interesting. It's a whole other world, yet you can see similarities to our own. The description's great, characterization is great, and made me think about submarines a lot whilst and after reading this. Everything kept reminding me of reefs. That's what it is. I'm going to try to do this as spoiler free. I will alert you if I do think there's a spoiler, but I'll try to do this spoiler free as possible. Let's jump right into the quotes. Page 14. He noticed the steel and scrimshaw ear studs worn proudly by a couple of Rick's companions to indicate that they were sea kissed. A degree of hearing loss was common among those who spent a lot of time diving or trusting their lives to submarines. Sea kissed deafness was the mark of a seasoned aquanaut and therefore generally respected. Sign, he asked them quickly in myriad sign language and received a nod. Many sea kissed could lip read or retain some of their hearing, so it was always polite to ask whether they preferred speech or sign language. You know when you read a book and before reading the book, before even knowing anything about the book, you have ideas. And one of the things I was randomly thinking about was how sign language would actually be really easy to write into books. And that I'm shocked there's not more sign language in books because all you'd have to do is put it in italics or mention signed instead of said. And I was like, oh, that's, why is that not in there? And I have a character in my current book that I'm writing who is deaf and uses sign language. So it was something I was thinking about and looking into. And then when you read a book and it's like, oh, we were thinking the same thing. And I absolutely love the sign in this and I love the representation of it. You'll see as the quotes go on, Hardridge has done the research. Page 28. When the governor had taken over the island, 
by the simple, honest method of having lots of armed men and declaring that he'd done so. So true. And as the book before this I read was the Olive Grove in Enns, which is about a black community in Stapleton in Bristol. These two quotes hit home a lot. They just linked so well together. Page 45. He didn't mention us, signed the freckled girl, but he really likes to talk. His rambling tale had annoyed her. Even with her level of skill, reading lips at that distance was tiring, particularly when the boy switched, twitched his head this way and that. Representation. We like it. Page 103. Hark tried to smother an uneasy nagging resentment of Jelt. You're not allowed to go places he can't go, said a small voice in his head. You're not allowed to have things he can't have. You're not even allowed to think things he can't think. Toxic relationship representation here. This just shows that to have a toxic relationship, it doesn't need to be a romantic relationship to be toxic. You can have toxic friend relationships as well and this be a toxic relationship. Page 169. Storms, Hark muttered once the patient had totted away. He had wondered what the god Hart considered a problem to be fixed. Apparently, not enough squid suckers was on the list. Just light humour. I love Hark's humour in this. Page 178. Spineless. I've got a spine, Hark felt his temper fraying. But spines are meant to bend so they don't get snapped. You can't just, he trailed off. Selfin had coldly and deliberately looked away from him. He had been silenced. A. The spineless thing comes up again and again and I absolutely love how he's like, I've got a spine, it just bends. The spines are supposed to bend. I love that. But I also love how Selfin, who is sea kissed and has zero hearing, can turn away and end the conversation entirely because if she cannot see you, she cannot lip read, she cannot see your signs. And I love that. I love how A, it's shown as being very rude, but also how it's a thing that you can do and that it's shown in here. Page 203. She's a prototype. What does that mean? asked Hark. It means that every voyage is a safety test and it'll be scientifically fascinating if we die in her, Vine answered cheerfully. I love Dr. Vine. They're a grey character and I just absolutely love their attitude towards life to some respect. Page 335. The gods may have been vast, terrifying abominations, but at least they were local. Again, fantastic racism here. Just there's representation of racism in here, which isn't a good thing to represent as a racism. Racism is really bad, but the way it's represented, it's represented very well, as in it's there and it's shown. Page 348. It looks like the accursed offspring of a jellyfish and a stingray, said Quest after a moment. You say you know how to pilot this error of judgment. I love that description of Dr. Vine's submarine and I just love Quest. Quest is fantastic. And my final quote is page 397. He did think of something to say a minute later. I think I've got it better at choosing friends. So I love how real this is because we all do this. You leave a conversation and then you're like, oh, I, why didn't I say that? Or why didn't I phrase it this way? It's such a common thing to do and I find it's really not represented in movies and books. People always seem to say the right thing and yet this doesn't. It's so real and I love that about it. So my overall review of this book, it read like Robin Hobb to me. If you haven't read Robin Hobb, it's so real and it stays in your head. Yet at the same time, it's not like in your face. It's not like a jump at you. It's not like... I don't want to say gripping because you do want to know what happens and I mean I stayed up until half 11 which for me is a late night to finish reading this because I just needed to finish it. I wanted to know what happened in the last 60 pages. So it does grip you and you do think about it all the time and yet it's not like, I don't know, you're not yelling at the book? It's so hard to describe how it reads but it did remind me of Robin Hobbs. So let's get into my overall review using the categories I made in that vlog. Writing style, 10 out of 10. Superb writer. Plot, 10 out of 10. It reads very, very well. It definitely has a really good plot. It develops. You can see the character arcs, everything. World building, 10 out of 10. I really understood the world. Characterization, 10 out of 10 as well. All characters were distinct. They all had pros and cons about themselves. They all had fears, desires, wants and needs. Representation, I did give 10 out of 10 because 
It's one of the first books I've read which represents deaf people and sign language, which was really interesting to read about and just a really fascinating character. Originality, I give 10 out of 10. Now, enjoyment. I really enjoyed the reading this book, but also you're not yelling at the book. It was really hard for me to judge. I actually gave it a 9 out of 10, but also I would definitely tell anyone to read it, but it's not one that you're going to scream at, and yet it's really stuck in my head. So overall, I gave it 4.5 stars out of 5, but at the same time, it does feel like it should be a 5-star read. It was very difficult for me to mark, so I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars, but I did really love it, and I would highly recommend reading this book. It was very well written. Honestly, there's a specific style, and I don't know how to describe it, but it sticks in your head without being all encumbersome in there very very good it was a very beautiful world great characterization and as i said i keep thinking about submarines now and that's it for this book for you thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you like what you see don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you like to see as i upload click that little bell down below you can also follow me on instagram facebook and tumblr i post on bookish pictures as well as my writing tips and unboxings on there and thanks for watching guys bye